Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're joining us from. It's 3 p.m. here in the UK and it's 10 a.m. Eastern time. And you're all most welcome to join us here at Zero Days Live. Guess what? Not only is it Fun Friday today, but it's also May the 1st, uh, unlike um, uh, otherwise known rather as May Day. So at least here in the UK, of course. So as you can see, I'm embracing the theme. And I've tried to go with the traditional flair of Morris dancers, which is part of uh, British tradition where the celebration of uh, start of spring begins. Uh, Morris dancers are part of that. It includes dancing, cake, crowning of the Queen of May and dancing around a maypole. And of course, uh, traditionally in the UK, we do get a bank holiday, um, but that's actually moved this year to uh, celebrate BE Day. So our bank holiday is going to be Friday the 8th of May this year only. Uh, so that does give us the opportunity to celebrate May Day here today. However, in retrospect, and now I'm looking at myself on screen, my effort may actually look a little bit more cricket-like um, and that perhaps I'm going out to bat and ball for a cricket team. Either way, I think that happens in the spring as well, so I'll let you decide. Now, I'm going to remove my hat just momentarily. Um, so this week's been an interesting week for us uh, as we've revisited uh, the issue of remote working once uh, once again, uh, one month on. We've gleaned insight from experts such as Becky Pinkard, CISO of Oldmar Bank. Uh, today we do have a zero days live first though, and we do like to pride ourselves on the number of firsts that we do have. And we're going to be joined today by journalists on the show, Alex Scroxton, security editor for Computer Weekly. But before that, um, a little bit more of a run through of the show. So firstly, hello everybody, hope you're well. I'm Stuart Reid and I'm with Nominec, focused on cyber solutions. And as usual, I'm in the chair to welcome our special guests each and every day of the live shows that we have. And just a quick reminder that we at Nominet are primarily known for being responsible for managing the .uk domain, which we've been doing so for uh, over 23 years now. We have something in the order of 15 million domains currently under management. And building on this strong heritage of understanding the importance of domain names for network connectivity, we also provide cybersecurity solutions to protect both government and enterprise networks worldwide from cyber attacks, including providing service to the UK government's National Cyber Security Centre. And ensuring people are able to be connected, included and secure is at the heart of what we do at Nominet. Uh, and it's important perhaps now more than ever that that happens. Uh, and with that in mind, we wanted to bring you an interactive show to bridge the gap that's potentially been left behind by that lack of physical meetings that are taking place right now to bring you what we've called Zero Days Live. And it's for everyone with an interest in or from within cybersecurity. Now I'm joined both front of house and behind the scenes here with a highly capable team making sure everything runs just the way it should and getting it back on track swiftly just in case it doesn't. And speaking of tracks, as you'll know for everyone that's tuned in this week, this week's burning question is, what is your favorite isolation tune and why? So please do let us know. Now today for me, I'm inspired by The weekend, of course, so I chose Something for the weekend by Roxette, classic tune. Uh, song title also shared by Pink too, I believe, so there is two for the price of one there. And speaking of someone who is not two for the price of one because he is simply unique, Steve, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. I'm not sure the uniqueness is necessarily a good thing, but um, I'll take it as a positive for now. I would do. And actually, if only to underline the point, Steve, you look very unique today. So um, do you want to uh, explain something? Well, as you know, I struggled with today's Fun Friday theme of, uh, of May Day. Um, and all I could think of was the fact it's spring, the flowers. You know, on May Day, you get a lot of flowers thrown around, I think, around a maypole. I couldn't quite get my maypole into the, uh, the home office. So I went for just the flowers instead. Very nice and very elegant you actually look as well there, Steve, have to say. Thanks. Now, um, what is your isolation tune of choice and why? So I think I'll stick with my 80s theme uh, mm. and um, and go with the flowers. I'm going to go with Bed of Roses by Bon Jovi. Um, and closely linked to that, I think my, my second is Keep the Faith, just to go with the Bon Jovi theme uh, and my, my ongoing commitment to keeping the faith around what we're doing. Uh, and keeping positive. 
Excellent. Well, we're certainly keeping the faith and keeping positive every time I look for you to join in the show, Steve. So thank you very much for that. We will come back to you very shortly. Now, this show really isn't the same uh, without you all joining us uh, at home as well and tuning in. And we're delighted to be welcoming our regular viewers and also new audience members every single day of the week as we start to build an accessible community to bring people together. Now, speaking of community, we have just launched our community page on LinkedIn. So please do search for that and join our community online uh, that, um, uh, that will be available 24 seven. So anything that you want to uh, participate into that, uh, you're very welcome to do so. So the point of our show, of course, is to hear from others in the industry, uh, bring people together, and of course, interject some good humor along the way. Uh, and with that in mind, we do cover a lot of important subjects here at Zero Days Live, uh, but we make sure that we don't take ourselves too seriously either, uh, especially not on a fun Friday. So as a quick reminder, uh, each of our 30 minute or so shows, we are absolutely and completely live each and every day. And as such, there is bound to be some mild blips along the way. And we've experienced some of those in the last 20 plus shows that we've already done. Uh, but when they do happen, we just hope you agree they're part of the reason that you tune in to see us every day. And please do get involved in the show as well. It's your show as well. So if during today's um, webcast or any of the live shows that you join, you want to ask a question or give comment, please do so using the console on your screen uh, and we'll read them out during today's webcast. Kerry, who usually reads out our webcasts, where are you today? Hello, Stuart. I'm here. Wow. It looks like we've got the Queen of May Day sitting there before us. Or is it Pocahontas? I'm not quite sure. I think it's a little bit more Harley Quinn maybe than May Day, but yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, brilliant effort. I'm glad that you added the sound effects for us all as well. That got us right into the mood of May Day here. Um, so, uh, Kerry, what is your favourite isolation tune today and why? So, I'm ending the week. It's fun Friday. It's on a high. So, it's got to be Shakira, Hips Don't Lie, which gets everybody onto the dance floor. Excellent. Very upbeat, very tuneful. And certainly since today's all about dancing as well, because it's May Day, uh, perfect choice. So thank you very much. Uh, and everyone tuning in, please do let us know what your tunes are and we'll read them out during today's show. Simply type your questions or comments into the console on your screen. Uh, and while I remember, just another quick shout out. We are doing a compilation of clips from our listeners to say what they like about the show. Uh, so that we can put that onto social media. So please do get involved. Be as creative as you like. Simply take a five minute, um, five minutes, five if you wish, uh, or five second clip uh, on your smartphone and send it along to us at marketing at nominatecyber.com. We'll compile them all and let you know when it goes live. Now, as I mentioned a few moments ago, um, we are lucky enough today to be joined by um, one of our uh, Zero Days Firsts. Um, a, um, uh, a journalist from Computer Weekly. Uh, it's Alex Scroxton. So uh, welcome to the show. Alex, how are you today? It worked. It did. There was a Hooray. slight delay. There was a slight delay there while I clicked the button. But as you said, Stuart, live TV. I'm very well, thank you. I'm joined by a small sheep. Excellent. Brilliant choice because obviously lambs, spring, very, very close association there. Um, good uh, good to have you with us today, um, Alex. Um, so Thanks for inviting how are me. You, how are you on May Day today? You feeling good? Yes, it's the sun's out here in uh, here in South London at the minute. Um, wasn't earlier, but uh, yeah, Excellent. things aren't Excellent. too bad. Well, you, can never, you can never tell the weather, but it is spring and uh, we're all upbeat in our mood. So, um, we do have a bit of a, um, a, a tradition uh, for our Fun Friday guests. We'll get to that in just a second, but I do want to know what your isolation tune of choice is first, Alex. I picked, uh, purely because I keep hearing it everywhere at the minute, um, every time I turn on the radio, it seems to be on a song called uh, This Is Real Life by Blossoms from Stockport, which is um, uh, also quite a spring appropriate band. Excellent. Good. Well, I'm glad that we're all keeping the theme today. So thank you for sharing that with us, um, Alex. Now, 
Talking of themes, uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, for all of our Fun Friday guests, we do have a bit of a tradition that's emerging, um, which is all about what socks you're wearing. So uh, what we did earlier is we compiled the, uh, the socks that each of us are wearing today, including yours, Alex, um, and they should be on screen. They were briefly on screen. They should be coming back. Um, there we go. Uh, there are four pairs of socks there, and what we'd like to do is ask our guests for today to uh, identify whose socks is whose. So clearly you've got a bit of an advantage because of one of those four pairs is your own, so you should be able to get that one. Uh, but the others, let's start left to right. From the left? From from my left, yep. Indeed. Um, I think I am going to say the yellow ones are Steve's. I know the boring. Are they yours? They're mine. Ah, me the wrong. Thing. I thought they were Morris Dancer esque. So Morris I Dancer those. socks. Oh, yeah. I see Second it clearly now. I know that the uh, boring Marks and Spencer's grey ones are mine because I have very boring taste in socks, if not t-shirts. <laughs> I can't. I can't say that you've got um, boring taste in t-shirts, uh, but what I can say is obviously other grey socks vendors are available. Um, so the third pair, then, who's are they? Um, the third pair. I'm. Since I was wrong on the first one, I'm going to say the third pair of Steve's. Correct. Well done. Which can only mean one pair of socks left. Who could they be? And the fourth pair must. By process of elimination, if nothing else, be carried. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Good, good. Well done. That was good, good icebreaker session there. So appreciate that, Alex. Now, kind of moving on to a bit of um, a bit of a theme that everyone's um, uh, working on right now is clearly everyone's working from home. Uh, we're in a very strange situation, um, and um, I guess the first question would be. You know, how's the lockdown impacting you? Um, how are you finding remote working? Oh, we seem to be quite well set up for it. And Computer Weekly is part of a much larger um, organization called Tech Target based in the US. We run a lot of um, other uh, other websites over there and around the world as well now. Um, and this uh, we already have a d had a dispersed organization you could say going into this with you know our, our IT function is in the US largely we've got offices in in Munich in Paris in London Singapore um so the transition has not been has not been so bad and, be and because we're already uh, the computer weekly team itself because we're a, a highly mobile team you know frequently flying off all over Europe and the world or, or uh, out attending events around around London and the rest of the country Days, weeks go by where where I don't see half the team. So this has been um, close to, uh, as close to normal as so almost business as, as, as possible, usual, really. In many ways, I guess. Uh, well, thank you for that. And and given your role as a journalist, we we touched on that at the top of the show. Your first journalist um, that uh, that we've had. Uh, on the show. Uh, we'd, we'd also be interested to know how the news agenda has changed over the last month or so. So we did see at the start of the of the lockdown period um, a massive surge in uh, in people coming to the website over the first few weeks. It's, it's fallen back a little bit now but um, we feared that there was going to be a lot of the sort of stories that we refer to in the trade as ambulance chasing hmm. uh, people just trying to jump on the uh, the coronavirus bandwagon as it trundles merrily through through town uh, and there has been some of that but uh, what we've also found is that the old journalistic adage of if it bleeds it leads is it is true in these circumstances so the anything and everything related to coronavirus and what's that and, and the challenges that that has thrown up not just in in cybersecurity, but in 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 other areas of IT as well, as um, as uh, horrible to see in some ways because obviously um, it's a it's a huge global crisis, but quite gratifying as well. People are still looking to read and and be informed about what's going on. 
And with all of the kind of the news stories that, that are kind of bubbling through and and, um, and emerging, particularly as you mentioned, in light of of what uh, what the current situation is with 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 COVID uh, COVID nineteen, uh, what stories do you think are really cutting through with readers? Where where do you see that people are reading more about, and therefore I don't know potentially more worried about at the moment? For me, it has been anything and everything to do with Zoom. <laughs> Um, we, we, we caught a couple of stories quite early on um, when uh, uh, I think someone found a, a couple of researchers found a, found some zero days in uh, in Zoom, which were promptly fixed. And, and, and to Zoom's credit, they've been doing um, sterling work in, in trying to clean house. I think they possibly didn't quite reckon with how quickly they were going to have to scale, um, which is why, why they've had so many problems. But uh, as I said, anything and everything relating to that has been um, has been really cutting through. Um, but beyond co beyond COVID nineteen, we've had some of some some old favourites on the website recently, and the the rest of the news agenda hasn't stopped. People are still reading uh, content on the uh, IR thirty five tax reforms. People are still reading our content about the uh, the sub postmasters um, court victory and the the ramifications of that as well. And it's interesting because you're touching on a lot of themes there that that we've covered in in previous shows because you know clearly there's been quite a rapid change in terms of the remote working policies perhaps that organizations have put into place and and as you say some some areas of that are perhaps playing catch up and it all become more uh, more in focus than perhaps they would have done before um notice that um uh, we have steve <laughs> popped up on screen um, along with uh, the lilies uh, that are still well balanced on his ears. I can give him credit for that. Uh, for viewers of the show, that can only mean uh, one of two things. Either he's got something insightful to say or he's going to raise his virtual hand to ask a question. So what have you got, Steve? This is a virtual hand to ask a question of Alex, please. Um, just wondered, is remote working securely? And, you know, obviously the stories around um, video calling and um, and those kinds of things. Is that the main issue that we're seeing from a cybersecurity and, and COVID-19 perspective? Or are we seeing broader security issues as remote working potentially opens up uh, additional entry points into kind of corporate networks by, by cyber criminals? For sure, I, I think for the first few weeks, what certainly what we saw was was more a retooling of the existing uh, cyber threat landscape. So people were basically, you know, taking the existing threats into into the paint shop, respraying them, and and putting them back on the mm -hmm. streets. Um, so all the usual phishing malware attempts, we saw things like Emetet, um, uh, Sodden Akibi just come, you know, coming coming back to haunt us again, just using coronavirus lures. Um, yeah. Now that that's so you don't you know this is this is well accepted now I think and things I think are starting to change a little bit now in terms of uh, in, uh, people have established this norm of of remote working and there might be some some shifts in tactics coming down um, in the near future what those yeah. may be remains to be seen. Indeed. And do you think the crisis is going to have a lasting impact on the news agenda? Will we be talking of things in the context of the pre-COVID, post-COVID world when we discuss technology and, and, and changes that are being made? I, I don't really see how we can't um, at this point. And obviously, as you know, none of us have crystal balls. We can't um, we can't tell what we're going to be writing about in six months. But I would imagine that the impact on business, on the business world, and we see that beyond um, beyond cyber security into the rest of the IT industry as well. So from from cloud to storage to um, to business applications, you know, we've all, there's, a, there's a COVID angle on everything. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't see that going away for a very long time, if if, if ever, to be honest. Sorry. And that kind of actually neat, neatly brings us on to um, uh, the story that uh, we, uh, we reported from, from you yesterday around GCHQ being given access to NHS data to beef up their security. As you may be aware, we do a, a roundup of the news every day on this show. Um, and uh, one that caught our eye was, uh, was the one that, uh, that you produced. So well, what's, your, um, what's your take? What's your overview of that story? Um, so this came to us. Uh, I'll quickly shout out um, the Health Services Journal, who uh, actually first reported the story because they spotted the documents online. Um, we were merely uh, 
jumping on the jumping on the bandwagon as well. But um, the story, of course, is that uh, uh, GCHQ and the National Cyber Security Centre here in the UK have been given uh, emergency powers to access data on the NHS's cyber security and other IT systems. I think in in these circumstances, we always try to take the view that giving data to large government agencies isn't necessarily a good idea. Um, but in this case, I don't really feel like I have a, <laughs> I certainly don't have a problem with it myself. And the uh, uh, GCHQ made it very clear that they were not looking for or seeking access to access to patient data. Um, the NHS is working flat out. It's at extreme risk of of cyber attack at the moment, and uh, anything that will help it shore up its defences is um, is broadly speaking a good thing. And actually, we we did um, have some discussion about that on on yesterday's show, and I know you made some observations as well, Steve, that kind of echo some of those comments. I mean, what's what's your reflections on that story? Yeah, I think just just echoing what what Alex says. I mean, that they're, they're they're not looking at looking at individual patients data or anything like that this is about information around the security of the nhs um the networks and 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 obviously giving them advice on how they can help them and i think as we discussed with john last week you know the nhs are also going to be looking at other ways that they can use data inevitably that will mean new systems and new applications so i think it would be good to see security built into those systems by design with the help of, of GCHQ rather than an afterthought. Um, so I think it's always good when, when we can take that approach. Mm -hmm. I think NHSX, the, uh, um, the, the new digital uh, side of things there has also been doing a lot of work on, uh, on shoring up their, the wider organisational security posture there since it was yeah. uh, formed last year. Obviously, they've been doing a lot of work since the WannaCry um, incident of 2017 as well. Yeah, absolutely. We we spoke to uh, John Noble, CB, who's who's non-exec director there um, at uh, NHS Digital last week. So he gave us a really, uh, a really good insight actually as to some of the work that uh, that's going on there to support uh, the, the kind of the front line uh, from an NHS perspective as well. So uh, again, that that was live last week, but it is on demand as well. So if people that tuning in now haven't seen that, uh, then please do pick that up on demand because some really interesting stuff. Uh, that John was able to share with us. So thank you for that. Now, usually what we do at this point um, is we would uh, have a bit of a, a wrap up of today's news agenda. But because we have our very own journalist in residence today, we thought that we'd do it a bit differently uh, and ask you, Alex, whether there's any particular news headlines that caught your attention this week. I'm, I'm going to be shamelessly plugging uh, Computer Weekly here. I'm afraid, I'm, I'm afraid because other 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 IT um, magazines and websites are, of course, available. As well. um, uh, two of our stories that caught my uh, eye this week. Uh, my colleague, uh, my managing editor Cliff Saren, attended the uh, annual Retail Expo conference this week, um, or rather, he attended it online as it's gone uh, as it's gone virtual, uh, where he heard um, TV presenter and um, UCL professor Hannah Fry talking about the power of data, how mathematical models can plot a path out of lockdown. So she was discussing um, the uh, the infection rate, how to bring that down. One of the things that interested me in this uh, in this story was was the idea that remote working, such as we have it now, is probably going to have to go on for a lot longer than any of us can really um, can really quite comprehend. So you may be doing this for a, a few months more. Yeah, indeed. And I think people are becoming more and more geared up, aren't they, um, as, as we move through this to, to actually be uh, working remotely uh, or digitally. Uh, of, of course, you know, there, is a, there are differences between uh, kind of being able to, to work remotely versus being enforced uh, to, to work remotely. So there are some, some dynamics there that, uh, that may have to change in, in some of the mind shift stuff. But yeah, it's interesting that, you know, whether whether you prepared for it or not, six weeks ago, um, uh, we are we are effectively, broadly speaking, uh, quite uh, quite entrenched now in the remote working. So yes, yeah, certainly very interesting. Now at this point, we would normally turn back to Kerry, uh, but she's had to uh, virtually dash up 
to prepare for Nominet's virtual quiz evening uh, that we're all going to uh, look forward to enjoying later on today. Um, so what I'll do instead is turn it back to Steve and see if we've had anything coming in from the audience. What have we got, Steve? Um, yeah, so we've got some questions coming in for the audience. The, the first one is around um, uh, ransomware being in, in the news again. Um, so Alex, have you seen any kind of increases in, in ransomware? So this is coming from John. And John's asking if ransomware's hitting the news even more than it has done previously, or if it's just, as you say, kind of in connection with kind of COVID-19 lures, that is, is, that's why it's hitting the headlines. You see, I'm not convinced that, um, obviously we see ransomware attacks at, at, attacks all the mm. time, That's that can be taken as red. I'm, I'm not convinced that the ones that are happening at this point in time are necessarily a result of, um, of COVID-19 related lures. Um, cyber criminals get into networks all the time um, and they often spend upwards of you know three months moving around finding what out finding what they can find looking for looking for soft targets looking for other things that they can exploit before before launching launching an attack so uh, we've been reporting a lot on uh, on may's ransomware group um in in the past few weeks who are highly active at the moment um but a lot of those infections will have happened weeks and weeks and weeks ago and only now be be being uncovered um yeah my worry is that the amount of uh, the, the sheer volume of COVID-19 lures that we have seen in the past few weeks and the fact that people are working remotely on systems that are not necessarily secure in conditions where they're feeling stressed or anxious, that we will see an uptick in, in the next couple of months. Thanks, Alex. And another question that's come in from Dawn. Um, do you think that important news stories are being overlooked because of the focus around COVID-19? I know that they are. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I, I absolutely think they are. Um, even beyond uh, uh, beyond the world of the world of IT, and you can exemplified in in how much the the Brexit conversation that dominated um, the news agenda here in the UK for the past three years has just ended. Um, mm. Yeah, we are probably missing things. Um, I don't really, uh, I, I, I don't really know what else to, to to add to that answer. I'm afraid it's um, yeah, uh, no, journalists think... are motivated by um, you know, there's a desire to a desire to inform, a desire to be to be read, and and the the news stories of the day are, are you know that we gravitate to will will um, will often be the ones that are making the most noise. We try to do as as good a job as we can at uh, reading in between the lines and, and looking out for other stuff. But yeah, I, I would imagine that there are other IT stories that are being missed right now. Thank you. That's it from, uh, from the questions. Good you stuff. Still? Well, thank you for the questions that came in. Thank you for uh, eloquently reading those out for us as well, Steve, today. Um, and thank you, of course, to you, Alex, for giving your perspective on them as well. Now, of course, we're coming up towards the top of the show now. Um, but before we go, um, we do like to ask our Fun Friday questions of our special guests on a Friday. Um, so we would like to ask you uh, a number of questions. Uh, so um, I'll fire away if I may. Please um, be my guest. First question for you, Alex, is what is your favorite isolation activity right now? I've been sitting in a corner, rocking backwards and forwards and whimpering to myself quite a lot. Um, I've been watching a lot of Netflix. I've been getting caught up on, um, on uh, as much Star Trek as I can watch. Excellent. Well, as good an answer as any. So thank you very much for that. What's your biggest pet peeve of working from home at the moment? I actually really enjoy being part of a team that works, even though, as I said at the at the head of the show, that we are set up to work from home. I, I like being part of a team that is together and socialises together. So for me, even though we have a daily daily editorial catch ups, uh, it has been the uh, the lack of social contact. Yeah, and I think that's one that, that resonates a lot with with both the people that are tuning in, but also with the guests that we've asked that question to as well. So what was your first job? Um, 
journalism adjacent, I delivered the local paper for about six months when I was 13. And my first proper job was probably behind a behind a checkout at Sainsbury's. So I uh, missed out on being a key worker there. So, so give us an interesting fact about you then. Um, I nearly crashed a rowing boat into Steve Redgrave when I was 14, got thoroughly yelled at by him. I can imagine so. And that, what, what a change of course of history that could have been if it had gone uh, slightly serious. Taken precarious. out Britain's most decorated Olympian. In, indeed. We, we, we could be asking you all sorts of different questions now. Um, so uh, what was your first car? Uh, so I realised when you sent me these that this is a this is a security question. Um, you're not trying to fish me, are you? Well, so <laughs> it's, it, I, I, when we when we get to uh, mother's maiden name and uh, date of birth, then you know I'll you start need to, to worry. worry, shall I? Yeah, I do. So I was tempted to say it was a Bentley Continental, but uh, that's not the case. It was in fact a, a G. It was in fact a G Reg Royal Blue Ford Fiesta, which was so basic that it um, still had a choke. Indeed, for those that might remember that. Um, and finally, uh, Steve will remember that. And actually, since you popped up on Steve uh, screen, Steve, you may as well remind the audience what your first car was. It was a Hyundai Pony with uh, fake blue leather seats. Uh, I believe it had a choke as well. I'm pretty sure it had a, had a choke. Delightful. Um, did you ever did flood the engine? All the time. Mm. All the time. But that wasn't the most important thing about your car, though, was it, Steve? No, I did to make it look a bit more sleek. I put uh, some masking tape down, some black tape down the uh, the centre as a go faster stripe, um, just because uh, yeah, it looked pretty rubbish to be honest. Well, I'm building an image of it as I'm sure everyone at home is as well. Uh, last question then for you, Alex, before we wrap up. What's your favourite piece of technology? I thought long and hard about this one um, because you know, it was just a temptation to say my smartphone, because I'm not sure that it is, to be honest. Um, my MacBook, without a doubt, this been with me for eight years. It's um, it's got no battery left. It's uh, had several new plugs because the other ones all wore, all wore out. It's had a new hard drive. It's had um, it might not even be the same machine if I'm. Uh, <laughs> if I'm honest, but um, it's had so many things replaced and and, and changed, but it's uh, it's still going strong and uh, eight years old. I think it must be one of the oldest um, one of the oldest Apple devices still working. So I'll, I'll give it a little well, shout out. Thank you very much. Yeah, obviously other devices are available, uh, but uh, excellent. Thank you very much, Alex, for uh, for giving us not just your insights today around uh, the important kind of current affairs and news that's going on, particularly around cyber, uh, but also, uh, of course, sharing with us the answers to our Fun Friday questions. So thank you very much for that. As I mentioned, uh, it is now uh, the top of the show. Uh, that is it for another whole week. Uh, very special thanks to Alex Scroxton, who joins us um, from Computer Weekly as uh, security editor there. And also to all of the other guests that we've crammed in this week as well, including Marilise de Villiers, Donna Leslie, Jim Reese, Becky Pinkard, John Banghart, to everybody here front of house and also behind the scenes at Zero Days Live. And of course, to all of you for tuning in. And just a quick heads up for next week. It's another short week due to a Friday holiday in the UK but we will still be cramming in lots of other guests. We will be meeting InfoSec partners, Cyberfort, SoftBank, and BAE Systems. So please do join us then. In the meantime, have an excellent weekend and see you again soon. Thank you very much and goodbye.